Ottawa have decided to go with the man who drew one each last week at Tanadice, which means uh, Scott McDonald will again try to prove he can be as much a nuisance to that harsh defence as he was early in the season at Tancastle and continue to catch the eye of Scotland manager Walter Smith, who might yet decide to ask him to play his international football for Scotland. I think the most interesting aspect of the hard side are the absentees. The regular John Cockers is injured. Hospicil isn't even in the squad at all. Roman Bednar is on the bench and hasn't played since the Rangers match. And in comes John Calamelli and Jamie McAllister, which means, in effect, hearts have only one acknowledged striker in the side. Fur Park has hardly been a happy hunting ground for hearts in recent times. They haven't won here for three years, and of course, Ottawa won three out of the four league games and knocked him out of the League Cup, so there's a lot to be made up. And, of course, a new era for Hearts. And it's going to be interesting to see how they fare without three acknowledged strikers in the side today. Continuity is all important to win a league title, and that's what they've got to try to prove, showing that they could fight back as they did at Petrodri last week. That's a very interesting ball there. Gordon tries to get in there and hooked away. But Jim Hamilton tried to come in. And it goes. The big men were up, and here's the break. McDonald is going forward, but it doesn't go to McDonald from McCormack. There is McDonald now in behind Nielsen. He's got to play quickly. He doesn't. He's going for the shot. And there's Craig Gordon. And that is uncharacteristic. A little fumble by the Hearts goalkeeper there. Great break by McCormack initially from midfield. There's Hamilton again from the corner. That is very unlike Craig Gordon. He has a wonderful pair of hands, but twice now hasn't got that initial solid contact pieces to take this oh, and the goalkeeper taken late there yes Elliot coming in to Hamilton again that was surely a push Looking very carefully at this ball the screaming from the touchline at them there's Hamilton and it's in Brian McLean the former Rangers player it was debarred from playing at Ibrox in the recent game. Pops up there to put Motherwell deservedly in the lead. Hartley is lying very deep. The big man had pulled forward his schedule in that dangerous position. Appeals for a penalty and the referee is going to book schedule for a deliberate dive. The hard supporters behind that goal are in sense. The two players go for it. Down goes Gatchel, and the referee considered that that was artifice. But again, almost a hard spook. Hartley picks it up. No offside. Bednar. It's a decent ball, and that's great effort by Scatchel again. Reagan. Bednar. Pieces. Good ball across. No penalty. Nielsen going down in the box. Appealing, he was blocked.
Picked up by McAllister. Hawk supporters urging the side on now. Went into the 90th minute. There's an appeal for the penalty. It is. The charge into the box there. Andy Webster going in. Danny went. Penalty. And we're into added on time. What a vital one this is. Hearts have equalised. Paul Hartley, the scorer. They fought long and hard to get that. And Motherwell really must be anguished. They're a good bunch of lads. We just need to keep working at them. They've got to give them... You know, they've got to have the belief that they can go and win games and kill games off like this. But, you know, we're just delighted that um, it's another point, you know, against, against a, a team that's, you know, um, a very good team as well. So, you know, in the end, perhaps I'm demanding perfection, but I demanded that for myself as a player and never quite got it, but uh, <laughs> let's see. I, I just think the fact that we scored in the last minute just shows what great spirit there is amongst the boys. And the, I mean, it wasn't a great first half, I'll be the first to admit that. I do have to say that, you know, people have to understand that we have to play with the personnel that are available. Referee Ian Brines had a tough job on Saturday, primarily because both sets of players were determined to make life difficult for him. Takis Fisa shows his displeasure here from nothing more than an Alan McCormick challenge. And Ian Brines has to take the time to try and calm him down, as well as Stephen Presley. Scott McDonald then threw himself to the ground looking for a penalty after making contact with Julian Brelier. The referee ignored it. Schedule here is clearly fouled by Martin Corrigan, but with the multiple players thinking he's at it, the ref again has a tough job keeping a lid in what is always a needle match. Rudy Schedule was at the heart of most of multiple complaints. Here he makes a meal of a Sean Fagan challenge, and seconds later is booked for diving. Harshly, in my view, I thought this was a penalty. The game itself was low on quality because the passing was awful. Nielsen, Alan McCormick here, couldn't find their men. And then Paul Hartley's misplaced pass puts Rudy Scatch on his backside. More evidence of misplaced passing can be seen here with an Andy Webster clearing straight to Sean Fagan. But Fagan returns the compliment and gives it straight back to him. Late in the game, Jamie McAllister and Sean Fagan get into yet another tangle. But again, there's nothing in it and the ref waves play on. Here's another look at the penalty incident that led to Hearts getting a point. No doubt in my mind, Ian Brown's got it right. It's a clear penalty, but the Motherwell players can't believe it. But this was a day when the ref couldn't possibly get everything right. Archie, uh, I think we've established Hearts weren't at their best on Saturday, but still a vital point for them. Yeah, Andy said it all. There's very little I can add. Um, it was a disappointing game. They stuck in, as uh, the manager said. Uh, they didn't play particularly well in the first half. The mystery for me was Motherwell disappearing in the second half. Uh, the midfield, which had played uh, particularly well, uh, just simply became anonymous, uh, not to say transparent. And every ball that came out of the Motherwell defence landed at a heart's foot, especially in the last 20 minutes. And that meant there was almost remorseless attacking. Without them actually threatening the goalkeeper, the, goal, the Motherwell goalkeeper didn't have all that many great saves. He cut out a few balls. Uh, but apart from that, um, it's the fourth time this season that Motherwell have lost a goal in the last couple of minutes. Mm. And the last one, of course, was Chris Boyd, um, the fifth part for uh, Kilmarnock. So that's... That's an anguishing time, and Terry was being very kind and benevolent and uh, avuncular with his lads there at the, at the end with his comments, uh, but they have themselves to blame for lying very deep in defence. Craig, Motherwell took the game to Hearts, even though Hearts were lying uh, deep, and they had chances before they scored, didn't they? Yeah, they played a lot better in the first half. They played a lot of good stuff, Motherwell, and probably just shaded the first 45, and 
Jim Hamilton and Scott McDonald, great partnership. The big guy, the small lad, you know, short, short. Dougie aren't it like, and a lot of people compare him to Dougie, you know, low centre of gravity, very difficult to deal with. And uh, Jim Hamilton knows where to get in the box at the right time. And at that point, I thought Motherwell were doing great. What a clever free kick this was. Terry Butcher was actually out in the dugout shouting at Jim Hamilton to go down that side and he got his reward and big Brian McLean scored his first goal for the club and uh, unfortunately the end wasn't quite as good for Brian McLean but he had a really good 90 minutes alongside Stephen Cragen. It wasn't but we've seen Hearts go behind this season Andy and they show great character don't they? Yeah I think you have to credit them for, for coming back. They've now got a couple of home matches which obviously they'll be looking to, to build up a few points so they've came through a sticky phase but I'm sure Graham Rex is absolutely desperate to get that first win get the fans on side. He wouldn't want that type of run to continue any further. Julian being very cheeky about you, about your penalty opinions, uh, no doubt that this was a penalty for Hearts. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. There's been a number this weekend that have been missed and uh, it was a clear penalty. I think it was desperate from uh, Brian McLean to just to try and hack this ball away. They were under the cosh and uh, you know what? I thought it was a decent claim even earlier mm -hmm. from uh, Rudy Scatcho and Robbie Nielsen. And Craig, when he took the penalty, it was a corker, wasn't it? Oh, it's absolutely magnificent. You're 90 minutes into the game, you need a bit of bottle, and Paul Hartley come up with the goods, but I'm humourless referees, I'm sorry, but why do you book a player for celebrating in front of his own fans? I can't understand that. The opposition fans can cause trouble. To run to your own fans and celebrate, that's surely not a problem. This uh, is entertainment. Archie, your early thoughts on the Graham Ricks regime? Difficult for him because of the off-field uh, opinions that have been expressed, and apparently no, legally, as I don't know whether it's legally, quasi-legally expressed by the SFA, you know, having an examination of his character and so on, so it's going to be very difficult for him to settle. But people within the game who know him respect him for his footballing and coaching abilities. And uh, at the end of the day, despite the controversy, that's all that uh, really matters to the hearts of